Some artists make brush packs and release it to the world. Some artists share texture packs. I made none of those because I like to use other people's brushes, textures, and templates. But you know what I have made? Buttons! Today's video is all about celebrating the release of my new Photoshop action set that I use almost all the time for storyboarding, for drawing, and illustration. A tool that has sped up my process by a bunch and made my job so much easier, which you can now purchase and download from my Gumroad store page. What does it do? Well, watch the video to find out. One of the best advices that I've received from my professional career is to make your job easier for the person in front of you, next to you, or later down the line. So you find ways to make the job less cumbersome, make it more accessible, and streamline the process so it's easy to repeat the method over and over again. And I'm someone who uses Adobe Photoshop a lot for sketching, for storyboard work, and for painting. But for those who don't know, I also work as a story artist in feature animation, and most of the feature animation productions I've worked in in the major studios, they mostly use Photoshop. And that's because of either preference or because that is how the production is set up. And some people might be asking, why not just use Storyboard Pro? It would make your lives easier, and honestly, I would agree. But then there are things that you can do with Photoshop that you can't do with Storyboard Pro. So from my experience in feature animation, we had to tone our boards a lot with lighting effects, with blurs, with textures. We had to clean up our rough drawings for an executive producer screening, where everything is clear and the tone reads and the atmosphere is there. But the toning process takes a lot of time. It's very laborious. And there are many times where I'm thinking, God, I wish this part was a bit more automatic. And this is where Photoshop actions come into play. So let's talk about Photoshop Actions, and to load the Photoshop Actions window, you go to Window and hit Actions, and you'll notice that this little window pops up. Now, as you can see, Photoshop has their own default actions, and you can see I have a bunch of mine, but I wanna show you what the default stuff offers to show you guys how it works. So let's say I select something like sepia toning, right? And I have my layer selected with my art. So if I have this selected and hit play down here, you'll notice something happens. So if I click this arrow next to the effect or the action, you'll notice that it took multiple steps to get this result. And actions are basically recorded steps that you can make to repeat the same procedure. So let's say you have something that requires a lot of different steps and you have to do that for multiple files. Well, you don't have to keep doing each step one by one. You can actually record the action and then just apply it to your different files. So let's say for this one, I just want to make an action that applies multiple filters at a specific order. So I can actually create a new action. So if I hit this little plus thing over here, I can create a new action and I can call it, let's say, crazy, crazy filters, right? And now it's recording. It's recording right now. So whatever I do, it's going to apply it. You can also stop recording something before you can do any action just to like make sure everything's you know, all good. And then you can resume back by pressing the record button. All right. And then when I go to something like, let's say I want to add multiple filters. So let's just add some filters here and there. So let's add, you know, some artistic filters. So let's say we add some, some, you know, whatever content crayon. And then let's say we invert it and then we, we posterize it. Just, just really, really random, like just out there. Right. And now we've recorded an action. So once we have that ready, we press stop. So when I actually do this on another piece of art, so let's say I go back to my previous image, select my action that I just made and hit play, it's going to do the same thing. So guess what guys, I've also made my own set of actions that you guys can obtain. It is an action set that I've used for my professional work, for my personal work, and this is an action set that has been used by my coworkers and friends who are also in the industry. Actually, it's an action set that I've been working on with the help of my friends who were giving me ideas and what could be an ideal way to speed up this process of boarding in Photoshop or sketching in Photoshop and coloring your drawings in Photoshop. So basically, it's an action set that auto-fills your line art, you can also apply some quick lighting effects and ways to speed up the shading and toning process. 
And the reason why I made this is because all the simple applications of just like, you know, adding a fill to your character, adding some quick lighting, that stuff also takes quite some time. So I just made a way to make it more automated. Also the production that I'm on, it's preferred that we board in Photoshop and that our panels are fully toned with shading, with lighting, with atmosphere under a TV deadline. But this tool isn't just for story artists. I found a way to make it a bit more accessible to people who are making sketches, who want to make the process of the toning, the filling, and some lights and shades a bit more automated. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly whip up a scene with a basic background. It's a high school setting and I'm just gonna quickly draw out the character's line art. Very crude, very rough. This is how I usually draw when I storyboard. If you've purchased and downloaded the set, you're gonna notice it's a bunch of different actions and I've numbered them so you can load them in an order and see what each of them do. So the first one I wanna show you guys and the one that's most important to this set is the automat action. So to load an action, click the button that looks like a few lines, it'll drop a menu and hit load actions and load the one that's called line art automat. So what this does is that it takes whatever line art you have, it creates a new layer underneath and fills it with a blank white color. So when you load the action set, you'll notice a few actions pop up in the action menu. The first one, when you hit play, it'll create that solid white fill. But there are other options that actually shrink the fill because sometimes the fill goes beyond the line art and it sticks out like a sore thumb. And this is more apparent if you draw with a thin or light pencil or brush. So there are these two other actions. You can shrink it by one pixel or five pixels to conform it to the line art. Oh, something that I forgot to mention. So, you know, instead of having to like select an action and hit the play button, you can actually change the action setting to button mode. So click that three stripe thing and hit button mode. And instead of just like pressing that play button every time you have an action selected, you can just press the action itself and it'll just automatically apply to it. Okay, so the next action that you're gonna load in is called the matte value and tint. So basically what this does is that with the press of a button, you can darken or brighten whatever layer you have selected without having to go through brightness and contrast to the adjustment settings. So I just made this with a press of a button. So now I can apply a quick change of tone to our character fill. Already the character feels like it fits within the atmosphere of the scene or the shot. And what a lot of people tend to do here is they alpha lock the fill layer. And what a lot of story artists will tend to do here is they'll alpha lock the fill, select a brush to apply their hand-drawn lighting effects, just to give it more tone, more atmosphere, more mood, just to make the boards feel a bit more cinematic with lighting effects. But even this step is laborious, and what if you just wanted a quick lighting effect that just sells the scene already? Well, guess what? I have actions for those too. So now I'm going to introduce my shade multiply action. So load those up if you have them. So now you'll notice a few new actions and some of them have a direction like up, down, left and right. And this is where the effect is being applied on the drawing. So I made some quick shadows, either hard shadows or soft shadows. And what's great is that you can just add these actions on top of each other. So if you have a down hard shadow, you can apply a soft top shadow. It's just an action that utilizes layer styles and the rasterizing the layer, but I've utilized it in a way where it can actually speed up my own process when I actually storyboard or draw in Photoshop. So the next ones are rim lights, both hard and soft. So it's basically like the shade one that I showed earlier. This one adds rim lighting effects. Whether you want a quick rim lighting of the characters to the right side, left side, either top or bottom, there's a hard option, there's a soft option. A quick way to sell lighting and atmosphere. This is one tool that I use almost all the time. And of course it's not perfect, it's only going to capture the overall silhouette of the shape. So you can actually like select that layer that you're applying it to, and then just modify it with some brush strokes. But even adding a simple rim lighting effect by hand does take quite some time. So I just made an automated process that just gets the basic setup right off the bat with a press of a button. Now I'm going to quickly show some other actions that I made for the lighting and toning process. So the next one are the basic radial ones. So there's a shade and there's a lighting one. So what this one does is that it creates a soft lighting effect that's around the silhouette of the fill. So pretty much all direction. There's two options, one that adds a light and one that adds a darken, just to quickly add a bit of depth. Now the next options are called satin shade and satin light. And the reason why it's called satin is that it's based off of a layer style that I found in the layer style settings. And this is just another way to quickly tone your fills. It kind of acts like the radial ones from earlier, but it feels a bit more stylized with some straight lines. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of different presets for it. Of course, you get one that shades or lightens it, but each of those comes with their own like horizontal or vertical. And this is how the effect is applied. 
with the satin effects. And you can also decide if the desired effect is inverted or normal. So the next action that I'm going to load is probably one of the most common ones, which is the gradient effects. So with this one, it either has a dark gradient or a light gradient. And of course, each of these actions come with their own directions, up, down, left, and right, where the, ac where the action is being applied. Gradients is something that I've used a lot when I did my final tone pass for screenings in feature film animation. So this one's a pretty common one that I use a lot. And of course with these actions you can apply them on top of each other. So you have rim lights, you have your shadow effects, you have some satin or some radials in there too. And then you can finish it off with a gradient. But you know what, remembering those combinations of like what effect to add on top of each other can also get really tiring and it can also be laborsome or cumbersome. So the next action I'm going to load is called presets. What it is basically is some presets that I made that are a combination of all these other effects and then just made it in one single button of an action. And there's ones that I really resort to like a stylized quick render one where there's a rim light and some shadows. Just something there that's quick to easily apply lighting effects without having to think about which actions to press. There's Evil Under, there's Stylized Quick Rendering, there's Light Overhead. Each of them are just presets, each of them are just combinations of the previous actions that I've shown. So you can actually make an action that uses other actions, so actions within actions. But the only problem I have with that, if you are making an action like that or a preset like that, if you happen to change the name of your actions within the steps of that action, it won't function properly, it won't be able to include that action because of a simple name chain. So if you wanted to make your own preset of all these lighting effects combined, what I would do is go back to the action mode, the default settings, select the desired action that you want to apply, select the steps, duplicate them, and move them into an action folder or an action set. This is useful if you want to sort of use the same attributes of a previous action, but then just change a few things here and there. You don't have to hit record and recreate the steps to make that action. So the next one that I want to show is called Alpha Tone, and this is probably the newest addition that I made just recently, so it's still sort of like a work in progress. One of my friends asked me if there was a way to sort of separate the shades and the lights in that fill. So if they wanted to, let's say, color whatever highlight effect that they did, they could treat it as a separate layer, lock it maybe, and then maybe just like add brush strokes to add texture or change the colors or whatever. And if you load it, there's a bunch of different actions. So the first two are called new neutralized whites or neutralized blacks. So what this does is whatever layer you have selected, let's say it has all these lighting effects, some dark values, some light values, what it will do is that it will neutralize the selected dark or light value and just make it gray or just downplay it. So maybe you have too much shadows or too much light, you can just neutralize them and sort of reset it. The next two are the opposite. They strengthen either the blacks or strengthen the whites. So it's the opposite basically. If you have some shadows that you want to make blacker or darker, with the press of a button, you can make it darker. If you want to make it whiter, make all the lighter values much more stronger or prominent, you can just press it with a single button in case you felt it was too weak. Now, the reason why I was experimenting with these first two actions is to find a way to make an action that would separate the dark values and the light values into its own layers. So now I'm going to show you two more actions called alpha channel lights or alpha channel shades. So for this one, I would advise you to duplicate the current layer. Maybe make two, one for lights and one for shade, respectfully. And then if you're going to apply one of these actions, make sure that there is nothing on top of the drawing or the fill, or maybe some vignette effect that you have in your drawing. Because what this action basically does is that it selects all the, the whites and then clears it but it selects all the whites that is visible in the screen, not just the layer itself. So if you plan on having both the shades and the lights as separate things or separate layers, make sure there's a duplicate for each of those, the fill with all the lighting effects. And then when you apply one of the actions, make sure it's on top of one or the other. So if you wanted to apply the alpha channel shade to turn the shades into its own alpha channel layer, make sure it's above the layer that's meant to separate the lights. And then once you hit either action, it's going to remove everything else except either the shades or the lights. And from here on, you can actually alpha lock it so you can 
apply brush strokes to it, you could add its own blend mode to it, just to be a bit more flexible. Now, I personally don't normally use this action, but because I made it, I've been finding ways to be a bit more creative with it, and it's actually helping me speed up the process of when I tone my characters or sketches, and I can still treat the lights and shadows as separate layers in my PSD files. So instead of handpicking the colors for the light and shadows, I can just like do it all in black and white and then apply this alpha channel actions. It does it for me automatically. It can separate those for me automatically. All right, so those are the main actions that I wanted to personally show you guys. And the rest of the actions, such as the post-processing or the post-effects, these are just experimental. And I don't think they're super important. So these ones are me trying to experiment with automatic comic halftone effects some specific sketchy effects, some mosaic or computer pixelation effects. It's all very experimental, and I'm sure you guys will find a way to utilize it if you guys have it, but it's just there to open some possibilities if you guys want to modify or play around with these actions. But hey, I'm just experimenting with these ones. But like I've said, I don't use these actions just for storyboarding alone. And in fact, I've been also working on these actions to make it more accessible to people who just like to draw, sketch, and color in Photoshop. So let's say you just had a few rough sketches, but you think it would look a bit better with just a bit of quick matting, a solid fill with some lighting effects here and there. You can quickly do that without having to overthink or do everything by hand. You can just do it with a few presses of buttons. And if you want to add some brushstrokes element, at least you have a foundation to work out of. I use the auto mat and the auto fill all the time basically. So every time I have a clean line art and making sure the gaps are closed because if you don't close those gaps, it won't fill those in. But when I have a sketch of a character and I want to color it and clean it up, I always apply the auto mat just to get all that labor work of just making a solid fill of that character without having to brush each stroke by hand. I could just press it with one button and it'll just create a fill where I could just alpha channel it or alpha lock it, I mean, and then just brush strokes the colors that I want. I could make a new layer on top of it, clip that layer to that auto fill, and then just brush along with its own blend modes without having those brush strokes actually leave that silhouette. So let me show you guys how I use this for my character art or for my sketches. First, I draw the line art of my character. And some line arts share the same layer, some have their own separate layer, so you'll notice that when I apply the effect, it's going to apply to only a few line arts. And sometimes you'll notice that some of the line art doesn't have any closed gaps, so it's not going to fill in that information. So I have to go back and manually, you know, add brush strokes to fill in those remaining spaces. Then I use the other actions to shrink the size of those fills down by five pixels or one pixel, just so that it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, just so that the fill doesn't go beyond the line art. From here on, I would just like alpha lock those layers, those fills, and then just brush away the colors that I want for this character. And once I have those colors in, from here I could add my own lights and shades. So I could create a new layer, clip it to the, the solid fill, so whatever I draw, it doesn't leave that silhouette. I made one layer that's meant for my shade, so I can apply blend modes to it, multiply, darken, overlay, whatever. And then another layer just for the highlights, so things like screen, color dodge, linear dodge. But what if I want to utilize the actions that I made for my storyboarding process, the lighting effects? What I would do is duplicate the fill of the character, turn it back into white, and then just apply all those effects that I want. Rim lights, shadows, gradients, satin, it's all there. And what I could do with this layer is that I could just change the blend mode to like multiply or screen or whatever and have it on top of your color art and you have a quick lighting and you've applied some quick tones to your color work. Now I'm going to use it for a different scenario. Same thing, I duplicate the layer, I turn it back into white and I apply all my lighting actions and effects. But this time I'm going to actually paint on the same layer the lighting information that I want in grayscale and black and white, etc. This is what I mean when I utilize the lighting effects or the lighting actions as my basic foundation or my base. And then I just paint on top of it to get more specific and intricate shadows and light in my art. And when I change my blend mode, I have a more customized tone. But what if I want to separate the shadows and the lights into their own little layer so I can actually apply different blend modes to each of those respectfully. After doing my grayscale pass of my shadows and lights, I can duplicate this layer twice, one being the shades and one being the light. And then I'll apply my alpha tone light or alpha tone shade. And now I'll have the lights and the shades as their own alpha channeled entity. 
Then I could lock the alpha mask or preserve its transparency, select a blue brush, and then just like stroke away where I want the rim light to be bright blue, and then the light that's on the character, on the front of the character, I could make it a bright orange just to give it a bit more customization. And this is how I can use my actions in other situations other than storyboarding. So that's how I use my actions to speed up my process, to speed up my work. The thing about actions or making actions or using actions for your own work is that you have to be creative in how you're going to utilize them. The reason why I made these actions is to solve problems and to make the process faster, but to also make it usable for other people to use besides me. So if you have a certain problem that you want to streamline or make it more automatic, it does require some creativity in the problem solving skills. So something that I discovered when I was doing the alpha tone I had to actually invert some of the values because it did not read the highlights. So I had to like trick Photoshop by making one of the functions see the values as shadows instead of lights. And then I would invert it back so it would go back to normal. And I'm not kidding when I said it took quite some time to figure this stuff out or to make it usable because it did require a lot of problem solving and to understand how Photoshop actions work or how the program itself works. So there you have it. Those are my actions that I use for both my personal and professional work. My coworkers have used it when storyboarding in Photoshop. It has been used in a work environment and I've worked on it in a way that makes it usable in a work environment. I've gotten feedback from other professionals too. So there were other actions that I had to eliminate because there was just no use or it just made everything feel a bit cluttered and messy and just unnecessary. But yeah, I can safely say that it has been tested and used for actual work environments because at the end of the day, we want want to make our jobs easier for everyone and for ourselves. Anyways, those are my actions, the Tone Eco Touch. Okay, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.